Nigel, down at the uh, Super League offices in Media City today, it's, uh, it's been a monumental decision taken by the clubs. Just talk us through from, from an RFL point of view what it, what it means for, this, for the competition. Well, uh, the, the, the clubs have agreed to support the RFL initiative to introduce a marquee player rule, which will allow them from 2016 to treat one of their players uh, subject to a criteria outside the normal rules of the salary cap, which will enable clubs that produce players to, to, to have um, more opportunity to retain those players, and those clubs that want to attract players, they have some opportunity to attract world-class players. So it's a very welcome initiative for the sport. Yeah, I think it's great news for the competition. It's a proportionate... Um, introduction of a marquee player rule and it doesn't um, affect the financial sustainability of clubs but it does allow those clubs that can afford it the opportunity to try and sign um, new players or keep the elite talent that they've developed themselves. There is still uh, an affordability criteria that, that if you like superimpose itself on top of it uh, so there still has to be the ability to pay but fundamentally if you're asking your leading clubs to go up against the leading clubs in the world and, um, and compete with them then, then this is another opportunity for them to, 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 to attract and retain the very best talent they can. Yeah well as you know we've um, been in a position as a club where we've been put this proposal forward three times we own them and Kukash so you know quite a memorable day really because I know Marwan's felt quite strongly you know that you know, in order to generate further momentum for the sport you know yes we don't want to lose our star players to the NRL and to rugby union but also, importantly for a club like Salford, you know, we now have the ability to go out there and get the very best in the world. And, and you know, if we are to compete with the top four clubs in this in Super League, you know, these are the types of steps we have to do, not just for the benefit of Salford, but for the benefit of the sport in drawing its national attention. We've all seen with the kind of the World Cup, with the World Club Challenge, just how these big names really do attract people, not just for our home crowds, but all over the country, you know. Just imagine if you got a Thurston or a Cooper Cronk playing for a Salford side and then going round every, you know, Bellevue, Headingley and so on. It's just a fantastic day for the sport, yeah. Yeah, it has been a big decision, but for us, we, we support the idea because maybe more than the other club, we're fighting every time with the rugby union and uh, it will be good. It will be good to add uh, a special player in, uh, in our squad, so we vote in favour. And I'm sure it will change because now we are not uh, only with the salary cap to to looking for to don't uh, to don't go over, but it will be it will be good to attract a, a big player. From a fan's perspective as well, the chance of seeing big name players or, or even just retaining those big name players must must be great for a, for a fan to, to come along week in week out and and see the best on show. Of course, I think the World Cup showcased the world talent in our sport and I'm no different to, to the supporters that will have gone to those games. It was great to be able to see a Greg Inglis in the flesh or a Sonny Bill Williams in the flesh, whether that was through the World Club or through the World Club series. We've got to find opportunities to, to make that more accessible to the fan base and certainly by this, this, this ruling it does make it more accessible for, for clubs to try and attract that talent and bring it bring them here to Super League. What it's about is, is recognising and rewarding those clubs that have got the aspiration and the ambition to retain the very best talent uh, or to attract the very best talent to do so if they want to do there's no compulsion no one has to go out and, and sign a marquee player but it, it just provides that flexibility for a club to be able to do so it's a, we've got a very egalitarian league as we stand you know we're we're very you know we, we sh the distributions are fairly equal amongst all the clubs in the competition this just allows the clubs now that, that have got that aspiration that believe that they can attract the, the very best talent in the world and our supporters deserve that we you know we've there are too many examples of players that leave the competition this is a, a measure that allows us to begin to address that. Yeah, and I think what was really important on today's uh, agenda, not only was there the marquee player rule, but there were measures around um, rewarding clubs for developing elite young talent uh, and also um, funding those academies that are producing elite talent and giving them financial rewards for doing that. So it was a, a whole of sport measure if you like. It was about investing into talented youth as well as retaining and um, recruiting elite playing talent.